Yeah, hi. Um, and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, the, the Kafka and Spring developers. Do we have any Spring developers here? Uh, I assume that's still kind of very, uh, very popular thing in uh, enterprise development. Um, probably other people who didn't show their hands, they, they use Spring, but they kind of think kind of they need to hide this. You shouldn't because it's, it's good stuff. Um, and uh, interesting enough that recently Oracle released uh, the microservices framework uh, or set of libraries for building microservices and one of the pictures... Is possible standing near the podium? Huh? Oh, he wants you to stand there. people on the VC? Yeah, the camera. So oh, oh, the camera, this yeah. one. I, if I will say it like this, it's okay. Microphone, microphone. This good? No, the mic. Microphone. Mic? Mic? Oh, I didn't turn it on. This is the problem. Now it should be good. Uh, check, 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 check. I think now I can, I can even move, right? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Fantastic. All right, so we have this uh, sound check uh, pass, so we're good. Now, and uh, one of the pictures actually um, showed that Spring uh, and the Spring Boot and the Spring Framework is actually right now considered like a full stack. And now you see the irony, right? So how that everything was changed, that Spring Boot, when it just emerges, it was kind of lightweight and uh, easy to use and uh, easy to start. Now it's considered like a full stack, where Oracle, instead of like uh, <laughs> pushing for the Java E, now releasing a new uh, framework with some uh, name that I already forgot. Give me or something like that. But anyway, so yeah, Spring is cool, um, Kafka is cool, uh, Spring with Kafka, this is what will be you know, awesome today. And the reason why I'm doing this talk, I decided to share some of the, some of the ideas that I will be presenting next, uh, next week at the Spring 1 at uh, the Washington DC. Now, the short agenda things about the, I want to talk about today. So for those of you uh, who don't know any stream processing, anyone uh, using, doing stream processing these days? Okay, so after this session, promise me that you will, please, because, you know, this is the whole point of the session, I will learn some of the, so you learn some of the new things. Now, uh, I will do intro to, um, quick intro to stream platform, what is it, and why are we um, building this. Um, I will do general introduction to stream processing. And uh, do not look things like Spark, do not look things like Flink, you know, like some of the like, cluster management software. We're not going to be covering this today. We're going to be talking about Java library called Kafka Streams that will help you to build stream processing applications and you can focus on you know, processing streams on building clusters. And uh, we'll see how the Spring these days uh, can wire everything nicely so you can uh, build your uh, application using Spring Boot and use all the tools that Spring Boot provides. Um, there's plenty of things. It's not going to be extensive coverage of uh, all things Spring Boot, but things that would be um, important. So don't hesitate to interrupt me if you have any questions. Uh, I'd rather that answer this. If it's like a short answer, I would answer immediately. If it's a long answer and the audience will not uh, benefit from it, Yes, Chandra? Is there any way you could turn down the volume a little bit on your mic? I think this is something Ken can do uh, because I'm not controlling this. It's a lot of reverb. Yeah. Ken, can we do a little bit uh, less reverb? Uh, because I don't have control over here. Um, he is in the, in the master pool. Now, uh, this is where you're going to get the demo. And this link will, will give will, um, Will uh, bring you to GitHub. Like the source code that will be there, it would be um, PR, old standard PR that will be merged in Western. So all this demo will be available there. So, okay, now the, I said the things, uh, important the slide is shown, uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I do um, some professional services job at the company. Uh, so now I move to uh, full time developer advocacy. So this is what I do. Uh, I'm yeah, just uh, doing some, I don't know what to do with my arms basically. So that's why I'm just doing whatever I do. So yeah, and, uh, I work as a developer advocate at Confluent. Confluent. Um, I will talk about Confluent in a couple more slides. But essentially, I'm also on Twitter, and uh, unfortunately, you won't see, but uh, G here, this is my Twitter handle, and you can always find it here if you want to tweet during a presentation. Uh, yeah, and now I'm here, like this whole, whole, whole uh, feedback. So let me see if I can switch to this microphone, otherwise I will turn this off. Um, I will stand here, right? 
Um, um, the Riley, do, do you guys can hear us? Hello? Uh, we can hear you. Um, and if the AV controller could uh, send the slides down, that would be appreciated. Uh, you don't if they can send the slides, if they could at least reposition uh, the camera to the uh, where it's being projected. Uh, no, he is not in the room, so um, sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, well, yes. Listen. Yeah, and uh, if you have any questions, you can always hit me up on Twitter. Uh, I will reply. Um, I'm not only posting stupid pictures. Now, so what we do at Confluence? So, Confluence started as a company for people who started Kafka and LinkedIn. Um, if you don't uh, haven't heard about Kafka yet, uh, you will hear enough today about this, so you understand what is it and what is not. Um, and interesting thing about Kafka, it really, like when you're trying to explain someone, it really depends uh, who you're talking to. If you're talking to messaging guy, the messaging guy will tell you, oh, this is just another messaging system. If you're talking to maybe the uh, distributed database guy or uh, something like that, yeah, it's kind of, uh, it, it's a, like distributed uh, database, depends on the transactional log, um, but it has some pops up capabilities. If you're talking to some like uh, computer scientist, you say, yeah, this is. Um, this is a system that provides a database like durability, uh, some uh, strong consistency, and there's involved some uh, um, uh, consensus protocols and things like that, right? So it's really, uh, really, um, who are you talking up, uh, to? And which is essentially shows like uh, what's the problems uh, the people at LinkedIn are trying to solve. And essentially, this is what the problems they try to solve. So at LinkedIn, uh, they're trying to build uh, some sort of system to figure out where data is and how to get data from point A to point B without these all sorts of indirect communication between these apps. There was a bunch of databases, Hadoop systems. Essentially, in the very essence, they wanted to have fast ingestion layer for Hadoop because to bring the files and to process these files back in the day, they had to FTP those files and uh, wait until the end of the day, and uh, so far and so on. Now, this is what they tried to solve. Like, have you ever seen this episode of uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, when the Charlie was trying to find this guy named uh, Pepe Silva, and this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to find some information. You're trying to find, like, what systems, uh, source you need to talk to other people, um, you need to call the API, they change the API, so you need to go directly to their database, and you end up with this, this picture again and again. Now, so one of the things that uh, uh, they were trying to do is to bring a uh, so-called streaming platform in, into play that allows to have um, pops-up mechanisms so people or organizations or applications, they can read data and uh, uh, bring this data into their applications in their own speed. So design of the system was highly influenced by, by, by this pattern. So there would be multiple readers, so that's why Kafka is optimized for many reads. Um, here's like one of the um, one of the differences that I will also uh, address in um, in a couple more slides. But in general, when people say, "Oh, yeah, it's another messaging system," it's like in queue, um, not uh, not entirely. Um, so, in the essence, how you could use this, uh, this uh, application? So, the Kafka provides this. Um, um, full tolerant and highly available buffer that absorbs all this uh, information that comes in high velocity and high volume. For example, information from sensors, information from mobile devices, all these click streams that comes from the website, they can go into Kafka. And Kafka is designed to absorb, uh, absorb it so your application who process this data um, that will not be you know, affected by uh, the burst of, of data. So the things like um, stream processing frameworks, they can work in, in its own uh, pace and its own speed in order to uh, provide this processing. As you can see in this picture, you don't see uh, any clusters, but you actually can do uh, with some clusters. We will focus in on some libraries like the Kafka streams, but you actually can use whatever software to do uh, distributed computation. You can use Hadoop. There's a connector for SGFS that allows you to bring this data and Hadoop can run this. There is a connector for Spark. You can run this in, in Spark. Um, there is a connector for Flink. The Flink uses the Kafka as a, also a ingestion for stream process. Now, and uh, um, you can say yes, uh, but it, it's all good. But uh, what uh, we can do if we need to like query this data um, and uh, mm, you know use this like a key key based access, how we can build indexes and so far and so on. For that matter, we can use um, uh, some external storages that designed to be um, 
you know, this is what I call the servant, servant layer. The, 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 the storages that are designed to be indexed and uh, have good uh, performance on um, the random writes. I will talk about this in a couple more slides. But here's the picture in general of the streaming platform that uh, we'll be talking about. There's a few components here. And um, one of the components is the producer and consumers, how you, you know, writing data and how you're reading data. Um, there is a streaming engine that more higher level uh, abstract that allows you not focusing on individual messages but focusing on actual processing logic, building your processing apps rather than thinking, oh, I retrieved the message, I sent acknowledgement, now I'll do, do something with it, uh, I will provide some fault tolerance, so far, so on, so on. Now, and also, uh, you want to bring um, some data in and uh, data out of the system without uh, much of the effort. So, the connector frameworks that uh, I will also talk a little bit in the next couple of slides. Now, what is stream processing? So, stream processing is a tool set, is a device that dealing with uh, events as they arrive in the system. As you saw on this slide, you don't see anywhere the things like, okay, so we will, uh, we will wait until, what, like 7 p.m., we'll close our data, and after that we'll start processing. We are processing data as it arrives. So data constantly flows, and the, uh, this like a continuation computation a logic will be executed as data arrive. So there's no time, no time for wait, uh, because it in introduces some other latency, and we don't want to wait. Like in a simple, in a simple use case, like how many of you guys know SQL? Hey, it's uh, enterprise developers. Everybody knows SQL. Um, um, yes. So. Why don't we use SQL to explain some of the concepts around stream processing? Now, we have an incoming stream of data, which, which is going to be, you know, credit card authorization attempts, right? So, someone's swiping credit card, and um, you need to have a stream of fraudulent events. So, you want to somehow find the, from the, you know, data that, that uh, constantly has uh, uh, changes from these uh, credit card swipes, uh, you want to find what is potential fraud. Now, we, uh, we can use um, something to describe it. So first of all, we have derived stream. So we have a stream of authorization attempt and we're creating a stream from other stream. So, and uh, we create a stream from um, authorization attempt. We're creating one stream from another stream with additional, um, with additional parameters. Now, we want to have, say, we're not interested in everything, uh, but we can consider our logic is considered fraudulent event if some authorization attempt happened within five minute window and number of this uh, uh, credit card and count of this attempt will be uh, more than three attempts within the five minute window. So uh, this is kind of uh, very naive logic, but this is logic that how explains how we can create stream out of the stream that will be reduced and will contain information only interested for, for this company. So this is basically essentially what stream processing does. And as you can see here, there is a couple interesting aspects. So it is what we call stateful stream processing. Why it's stateful? <coughs> any any idea, any, any like a guess? That's a five minute window and it's holding on to the state of the credit card number. Exactly. So stateful processing will depend, like, to process individual message for a given moment of time, we need to have some data, some information from the past. And uh, so this is why we need to accumulate the state somewhere. Um, it also can be done um, with uh, different tools. You can, you can have some, like, database that will accumulate this result. So, uh, for example, this will survive some of the application restarts so far and so on. Um, Opposite to um, stateful stream processing is the stateless stream processing, right? So if we do simple filtering, for example, you just uh, want to remove some of the things where um, I don't know, some of the property will not be true or false. So in this case, you don't need to accumulate um, everything that you you know uh, uh, you really don't care about uh, previous results. You just need to do it pass through only with a particular condition. Now, let's talk about uh, this uh, central piece, like, uh, do we have any, like, uh, computer science engineers, uh, distributed system geeks, uh, people who like to read and have a printed versions of some distributed systems paper in the restroom? 
<laughs> okay, you should. It, it's a very interesting uh, field, I would say, um, of uh, and the interesting way of learning things. Now, so essentially, uh, the concept of log or append-only file uh, a system that, based on this concept, uh, provides some of the durable messaging uh, design. And it, it's also very similar to very typical structure, like Q, probably you heard about this. Um, you're writing in the end, you're reading from, uh, from, from the beginning. You're writing in the end, you're reading from the beginning. Um, so distributed a log or a log and the version of this log that is distributed can provide you better um, um, scalability guarantees. Uh, we can build, and this is how the Kafka is designed from the very beginning, provide a uh, fault tolerance where some of the um, replicas of particular log or particular file will be distributed on another machine and it provides good storage. In essence, you always new message uh, goes into the end. And important thing to understand, all these, uh, all these squares, all these guys, like these, these, these things are immutable. So you're not changing this. It's like a fax in your life. They already happened. They might not uh, be, you know, good or bad, uh, pleasant or not pleasant. They already happened. They're in the past. Um, and there's no way how you can change those. Unless we have a time machine or something like that. So the same thing with uh, transactional. You writing this data uh, once, and after that, uh, you can you cannot uh, change this, but you can um, if you return in your you know memories. Uh, so in this case, you're kind of replaying these events. Uh, you can always replay, but you cannot change. It. And interesting enough that. Um, Different uh, the consumers, different application that reads data, they can read this uh, information with its own speed. Um, very typical question that uh, people ask him, like why named Kafka? Like is it like uh, some literature theme or something like that? Um, you can say I, 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 I see I see lots of uh, um, uh, lots of similarities with literature. So there's a writer, he is writing his book. And he's writing this book, and after that, uh, he publishes this book. And now, who interested in this information that is in the book? In this book, they can read this book on their own space, uh, pace. So Sally, Fred, and George, they can read uh, the book on uh, uh, like very fast because uh, I don't know, like Fred is reading uh, very uh, very fastly than uh, Sally and. I don't know, or the Sally is reading faster than Fred, and these um, these pointers can be also written in the book, like like a bookmarks like you're putting here. And um, in the Kafka, these bookmarks are called uh, offsets, or even even like in full as a consumer offset. So readers uh, they always know where they stop, regardless how you know. How the, the how bad was their failure because of the shutdown or it was graceful shutdown? They always know where they stopped before they um, they can proceed. So you can always restart and return from the point where you were. So this is very important. It's very significant difference between uh, systems like messaging system where you can say, oh, so I missed these messages. Probably I will not ever read those. So I what, what I can do with Kafka is not the case. So if you're interested to read all the data when you was down, when you were down, you can do that. Um, there's ways how you can reset your offset. It started from the beginning of times. It's very convenient and it allows some of the use cases where you need, for example, you want to change the way how you process your data because in algorithm there was a mistake. With a typical messaging systems, it would be um, highly difficult to do, you need to involve some uh, external storages that will have this data, so you need to somehow replay this from external storage. It's not the case in Kafka, in Kafka it's already stored and you can always replay it uh, from within Kafka. Um, and the offset is um, so basically your pointer, your, your bookmark, and uh, you can always move this offset if you, you know, want to do, if you know, for example, timestamp. You want to return some moment in time, so you sometimes you can you know talk your uh, to your uh, significant other saying, "Hey, you remember the times 
So you're using this like a timestamp, you're turning this into offset in returning to this fact of your, of your, of your time. So this is, uh, this is essential how it works. Um, any, any questions about that? Um, any confusion? Any something that bothers you? All right, so um, this is the, pretty much it. So this is, uh, this is a fundamental thing about uh, how the Kafka stores data. Um, so this why, like when you talk about messaging guide, you say, yeah, it looks like you, right? It looks like you because you're writing from the end, you're reading from the, um, from the beginning file and you're uh, appending this uh, index at the point where um, if offset that you're reading will be equal offset that was last offset in this file, so meaning that you consumed your whole information. Now you're waiting for new data. Um, so how data can, can come, uh, how data arrived in the graph? There's two components, client components that your application actually implements. Component called producer and consumer. Producer uh, will write the data. Um, there's a different, uh, there's basically two strategy how you can write this data. Um, you either using a key, um, and in, in this case, you put this in a specific partition that will represent uh, distributed log and we guarantee that ordering will be uh, preserved and this is a very important uh, property uh, for, uh, for, for Kafka producer. If your application will depend on order of certain events, when you put this on the same key, they will end up on the same partition, all these messages end up on the same partition and ordering will be preserved. For example, uh, you're doing a computation of credit card transactions and um, it would be awkward, uh, if not say another, if you will uh, uh, the mix up the order of your uh, withdrawal with your um, you know, income uh, the transactions and uh, something will, uh, will not match up. So this why order is important. Now, in other approach, when you don't care about order, you just want to have a better um, throughput to write data you don't have to even specify any keys. So in this case, uh, everything would be balanced across uh, partitions in the topics and the producer will decide where to put this in order to equally uh, balance this data across, across partitions. So it's called round robin. Now, and at this point, you can say, oh, yeah, it looks like uh, any modern NoSQL database. It uses consistent hashing algorithm to put the data in a particular partition and particular partition would be stored on a particular, um, particular machine. Yes, it sounds like a, like a modern NoSQL database. And actually, uh, some of the things also you can find similar, for example, replication. You can take any partition that you have and have a copy of this partition. So in this case, where the, where the um, primer node that holds the primary partition will go down, like, like this, there still uh, will be a replica, if you configure a replica, uh, that will take over responsibility for storing data. So interesting uh, point when we're talking a little bit, little bit of things uh, uh, about um, consistency model, like uh, we like to say in uh, computer science. So basically, uh, Kafka has more a stronger consistency guarantees than uh, databases. Kafka doesn't employ eventual consistency because uh, it doesn't rely on replicas to perform reads and writes. So your uh, application always write to um, to leader partition, and a read also will happen only from read partition. So in this case, it will give very good uh, consistency guarantee from things that the, your consumer will see whatever producer produces. So there would be no like time lag where application will kick in and eventually will data will balance. Uh, and in this case, the replication uh, will be handling. Uh, will handle this data replication only from perspective of data safety and uh, uh, fault tolerance. Um, now, once again, one single topic. Every um, application will work with this abstraction called topic, um, and uh, the uh, topics are consist of partitions. Many uh, producers can produce the same topic. Many consumers can read the topic. Consumers are grouped in so-called consumer group. It's actually interesting, uh, interesting aspect that allows to scale reads from from Kafka. So on the other side, so consumer, when there's one consumer, it uh, subscribes to the topic and it receives all partitions 
uh, and it starts reading data from all partitions. Now, if you want to increase speed, you want to read faster, you start another consumer that will join the same consumer group. It's just the parameter that you specify in your application. And in this case, they will start consuming data with double speed. Right? So it is why uh, when the people ask, oh, how many partitions I should use for my topic? Uh, this is something that you can um, measure. This is what I usually say. If you cannot uh, measure something, you can control something. So in this case, you know what's your application performance uh, or requirements. So you would know like, how many, what's your read speed, what's your write speed. Um, and uh, interesting point from here. So um, there would be, uh, there would be a question to audience right now. So we have topics, uh, we have partitions inside topics, we have consumers that can consume um, uh, these uh, partitions from the topic. So let's say we have a 10 partition um, in, in topic and we have a one consumer. So how many partitions will go into one consumer? Given the fact I just told you the story about how the consumer works. Chandra, I know you always listen very carefully. Why? Because that's the only partition where the consumer can listen to. Not entirely. So when you have one consumer and you have a 10 partition in the topic, one consumer will consume from all these 10 partitions. So everything goes to one consumer. So think about this like um, there is a nest. There's a nest, there's mommy bird, and there's just uh, the baby bird just came up uh, out of the air. So, your, um, uh, this uh, mommy bird brought some like worms and uh, 10 worms and now this, this, this little guy will have everything like, meh, 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 meh. <laughs> all these 10 partitions now there's another one, there's another egg and the mommy bird which is uh, in, in Kafka we call it the uh, uh, consumer group uh, controller well equally distribute these uh, this worms between them. So each of them will receive equal number of worms. Now, so what happens if we have uh, 10 worms and we have uh, 11 baby birds? Yes, one will be idling. So in this case we have a very interesting point. So there is like one-to-one -one, uh, uh, mapping with consumer and partition, which in this case gives you, um, so if you know that you want to have one-to-one um, uh, -one mapping between one consumer, you want to have only one consumer will, con will, 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 um, will process data from one partition, meaning like all these like a, a credit card transactions with the same uh, credit card number will go directly to one guy. This is also a very uh, important point uh, from perspective of uh, Shimpros. Now, um, another, another point. Now we have uh, 10 uh, baby birds and we have uh, one uh, mommy bird with 10 worms. Now, what happened is that like, one of the uh, baby birds, did, he moved too fast. He fell out of, uh, uh, of this nest. By the way, this nest is a, it's, it's your consumer group. So they belong to the same consumer group. So now, the rest of the group will take over. Uh, his responsibility of consuming these uh, uh, juicy worms, right? So in this case, one of the uh, baby birds will receive two worms in this case. This is how it works, it's how the fault tolerance is organized. And cool part of, of this is that a responsibility of a partition assignment is, uh, is taken care of by a mommy bird, by a consumer group control. So the, your applications that will join consumer group they don't need to know anything about uh, the neighbor. Um, they know that they will receive the data and this data will be good. Um, though, like, this very important point, uh, consumer group, um, the, the partition reassignment uh, uh, operation, it's quite, uh, quite expensive because uh, consumers need to stop uh, to consume at the point where the new consumer joins, so in this case it will take some time for a consumer group controller to rebalance these partitions uh, across the different consumer and as another is another thing that might happen that um, the worm that uh, the one baby bird one was eating after this event where you rebalance a partition continue reading this uh, continue eating this worm 
um, the baby bird number two will, will continue to, um, to eat. So this is a very important point to remember. Um, any questions about this National Geographic? Uh, yeah. If a particular consumer wants to join a consumer group, but the condition is like if the message is starting with record type 1, then only consume. Can you set that if then else condition or rules? So it's it's more like application logic. So this is something that we um, repeat the question for. Yeah, the, the question was if uh, one of the consumers uh, wants to join but only consume messages for only a particular time. So the cool thing about this, um, you need to do this uh, um, uh, filtering logic on the consumer side. Um, usually, what we say uh, reads are cheap, so that's why we don't put this effort on the broker to figure out that, you know, we need to send this message back to consumers. So, you will read this, you understand that you, you know, able and willing to, to consume this message and process this message, you will do it. If not, you will just skip it. So, it, it's much faster to read this and bring this to, uh, to the consumer rather than put this logic in the complex logic on the broker side. I have another question. Yeah. As you mentioned there, a uh, single top to topic would be shared across the brokers. So how that was difficult to understand that, like one topic is shared across the brokers? Yeah. So the question is, uh, one topic is shared across multiple brokers, how does it look like in real life? So, um, as you can see, let me see if I do have this one. So, um, the, the, like, dotted uh, lines, uh, they they uh, represent a individual topics, and inside these topics you have partitions. So the topic is more like logical structure. Same thing as you have um, like a table distributed in in uh, in uh, how how do you call it in distributed map in Hazelcast. Uh, sorry, because I still have a, a, a post. Uh, the traumatic syndrome of uh, distributed data grid. So yeah, you have a distributed map, and all these buckets are the buckets of that hold your data partitions. They just distributed across multiple nodes. It's just a logical grouping of the of the of the thing. So there's no like like physical topic. There's just additional metadata that says, oh, this partition belongs to topic one, and this partition belongs to topic two. So nothing more. And from application perspective, you look. It to Kafka broker as a one whole thing, and you look at the topic as a one whole thing. Um, you can go deeper. You can you can start uh, um, talk to partitions if you want, especially if you want to read. Uh, you can actually assign the reading for a particular partition. You can also do that. But uh, from from perspective of um, for perspective API, it's just a just API, just a concept. Yeah. Other than being distributed, that means it can handle more volume. How it is better or different from messaging system like MQ or Tipco? Yeah. So, um, so first of all, how it's better than Tipco? It's open source and free. Uh, <laughs> done, I'm done here. Uh, so essentially, uh, the, how it's different from the messaging system? In the messaging system, component like uh, the message listener. He is sitting there, and after that, a broker starts pushing data to it. Um, if your uh, application that consuming this data is not uh, very capable of reading uh, the same pace as your broker pushing this data, because it's the way how it works. Messaging system, uh, the broker will push this data to you. You can overwhelm. So in this case, on the, your client side, you need to invent some other mechanism, like a back pressure. You need to uh, have additional communication saying that, hey, um, Slow down. Uh, Not really. You can you can have increase the memory at the um, messaging server level so that they can hold the message. For yeah, that's why I'm saying like there's back pressure. So your client needs to communicate and uh, say, hey, just hold on, hold on. I'm I'm working on it. I'm trying, but uh, I'm not doing this. In this in Kafka, broker is your back pressure. Your data is already there. You don't need to allocate this memory anywhere because it's already there. It's already reading this from uh, from file. Another thing is performance. Kafka um, don't need to use extra memory for this kind of buffers because Kafka designed to be uh, multiple reads and it, like a 
concept of like consumer fan out when you have multiple consumers like really big number will not affect performance of other consumers so the way how it works Kafka actually has this mechanism of a zero copy so the data from file systems will be streamed directly to socket without creating garbage on, on JVM so in this case when you are reading this data you don't need to have this buffer your consumer say hey I'm ready just just you know just bring it and they start bringing things um, there's Obviously, there's stars, there's some uh, use cases where it's not the case. If you're using different versions of the broker and the, and the consumer, you need to do up convert, down convert messages, blah, blah, blah. But in general, uh, you know, in the ideal world with unicorns and rainbows, we have uh, zero copy between uh, consumer and uh, broker and between producer and broker. So your producer also, when it writes to socket to write the data, it actually sends to a thing called page cache. Page cache is a, it's, it's a part of operating system memory, it's not JVM memory. So this is where your, um, it's not swap, it's, it's actually a region that operating system um, um, allocates in order to provide more uh, robust uh, ways how we can you know, write into file system. You're not writing to file system every time, like every bits and bytes. You have some buffer and after that the operating system will flush it too. Um, to the uh, to the to the file. As a Java developer, you do in your your um, in your application, you just call in this API and write to file, but you don't know if actually it was written to file. Usually, it happens very fast. Uh, memory is much faster than disk, so that's why this buffer allows to have a better throughput. So another concept uh, that um, uh, that different from the messaging system, like uh, queue and, and things like that, is uh, scalability of MQ and uh, providing this kind of ways how we can partition this topic and provide also uh, better performance on writes because uh, you can increase write throughput but by increasing number of brokers in this case your producer will not hitting only one broker uh, you can increase number of partitions um, replication is out of the box so you don't need to reinvent ways how you can replicate the data how you provide your full tolerant uh, Thingy. Or if there's it, this thing was already invented, it might be it cost uh, a lot of things. Um, I mean, like a lot of things, but a lot of money. Um, so in, in this case, it, it has a, a different, um, different uh, pieces, a different bits and bytes from different uh, existing systems. Now, uh, let me do quick time check. So what we see? Here. Okay, cool. Um, so let me go a little bit faster here. Um, uh, same concept uh, comes with replication because uh, all replication mechanisms they use the concept of transaction log when you push and they take the golden gate. This is you know they use this uh, powerful concept to charge you billions of dollars. Now, uh, how we can bring the data? So since uh, we're talking about uh, some data processing platform, we need to bring the data in and take the data out. So um, Kafka, it's not only broker. Kafka, it's a huge framework that contains also the Connect framework. Connect framework is API that allows you to build a reusable components that allow you to do repetitive tasks uh, without re reinventing wheel. You need to bring data from database into Kafka, there is a connector for that. Um, you need to write data back to GFS, there is a connector for that. You need to consume RESTful web service and bring data into Kafka so you can do join with data from database, there is a connector for that. Um, and so far and so on and so on. There's multiple uh, things uh, that connector uh, connecting to. Also, there's a connector that can emulate JMS. So your application will not even figure out that uh, it actually talks to Kafka. There's, there's a, uh, there's a like, JMS client that allows you to do this kind of like, swapping. Um, your, uh, your Kafka cluster or connect connector can be one of the listeners of your messaging system. You just can, you know, read the data from your messaging system and uh, very quickly decommission because you will, you know, you will like the way how the Kafka will work. So, there's plenty of connectors and the cool thing is that you don't need to, you know, invent <coughs> anything. If you need to bring data to Kafka, there's already a connector class. GDBC, CDC connector, you can read from transaction log of database if, you, if you're into this kind of thing. Now, and now we go into the most important piece here. How we can process this? Like we have this producer and consumer, like someone writing, someone reading, it's cool stuff. Um, and also, uh, I would say that producer and consumer 
These two guys, it's not a trivial piece of uh, software. There's um, lots of uh, things uh, put in play in order to uh, support fault tolerance, uh, retries, uh, different optimizations, different acknowledgement meetings. I'm not going to focus on this one. It is there, um, and it's pretty cool. What I like to say, the cool thing about Kafka, there's uh, so many knobs to turn. Bad thing about Kafka, it's uh, too many knobs to turn, <laughs> right? So you, you can be overwhelmed. As a typical system with the multiple knobs, uh, we try as developers, uh, we try to provide the, the coverage for, I would say, majority. I'm not saying like uh, all use cases, but there's like 80% of use cases will be covered. There's some customers, they run stock Kafka without touching anything. It works for them. Um, uh, there are some customers that only doing something. So it's just a matter of taste. But let's focus on some of the uh, stream processing aspects. Now, there is a um, uh, thing that uh, you probably already noticed that we're not running any, any loads uh, inside the Kafka. Kafka is responsible for application, responsible for durability, uh, consistency, and so far and so on. You're not running anything inside the Kafka. You want to run your um, think about this like you have a database, like a traditional database, you have a storage and you have engine that built in. So that's why you can run all sorts of queries, uh, the, uh, the stored procedures, so far and so on. Now, in Kafka it's a little bit different. You have a storage, but your engine is outside. So this is what we will focus on. Stream processing thing is where we're focusing on, on, on actual processing. Now, uh, and you, with the concept of consumer group that we spent some time, remember this birds and nest, um, the, you're getting this scalability out of the box. So the Kafka streams uh, is a library that built on top of this concept. Um, so, and uh, it provides you scalability out of the box. Now, this is like a typical um, data processing uh, the diagram that we have here. We have data from Kafka, we need to bring this some our processing cluster. We have some app that will submit our job here. Um, we need to store intermediate, sta uh, uh, intermediate um, uh, state somewhere, um, like uh, Spark has uh, different options. You can store it in memory, you can store it in file system if you do like a snapshot. And after that, you um, either uh, writing this result somewhere, so your dashboard will be using, uh, will be using this data. In, uh, in, uh, in, a, in a way of uh, Kafka streams, th this is not the case. So your application, your logic, everything runs within, uh, within this uh, application. And we, we actually built one of our products that we use for monitoring based on this concept. Essentially, there's Kafka streams application that deals like interesting the dashboard with monitoring and all sorts of things. It's, uh, it's, um, it uses this uh, same library. Now, there is a cool things that I will skip high performance, high scalability, high availability, it's all cool. Couple things that I want to point out though. Um, so first of all is uh, we do have the support for exactly one processing. I don't want to start this debate. There's a few papers around this. Uh, what is exactly ones, what's the effective ones and why other people are calling this uh, different. What people calling about exactly ones, etc. Uh, it has an uh, integrated database, so in this case it's a stateful, uh, stateful stream processing where you can have intermediate step uh, a state stored without actually like, bothering bringing uh, some, uh, some actual database. It's already built in the framework. Now, it supports uh, every time when I speak about something, as, uh, people ask me, can I do joins? So that's why I renamed my, 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 my talk as crossing streams. It's kind of assumes that I will be talking about some joining things. People uh, from database world love joins. Um, uh, windowing. Windowing is a operation that allows you to create a finite, uh, um, finite data, uh, some, some, some intervals that allows you to put um, some boundaries on your infinite stream of data that allows you to um, do things like processing late events. You don't need to actually wait until all these events will arrive. You can reopen this window when this late event arrives. So results will be updated based on new arrived data. Plus scalability, it is, uh, it's, it's fantastic and cool. Um, really quick, um, I, I, I was expecting that there would be some nerds and the distributed systems uh, guys that would appreciate this. There's level theory. That important to uh, to understand. There's a concept of stream that is essentially a sequence of um, immutable facts. 
Now, you maybe uh, know this, but uh, or if you if you don't know, uh, I will repeat. Uh, there is a every database that exists uh, pretty much uh, before. Uh, pretty much like every database has this. Um, it has transactional law. And uh, how many of you have seen like if your database crashed, like and you restarted, and you can see some of the on the log, if you're curious, you go and log and see, it says like, okay, I'm rebuilding my uh, tables and stuff. So it's, it actually takes a stream of events, which is transactional log, and materialize them as tables, views, and far so on. So this is what we call stream to tables transformation. So you take a stream and after that, transform it into actual state. Stream represents history, a table represents state. So also you think about this like this. Um, uh, stream of events. Uh, uh, ten years ago, Victor lived in Moscow, uh, and uh, one event Victor is presenting in New York Java City. State. Victor is presenting in New York Java City. So in this case, all a uh, stream of events uh, of my life uh, came into the point where my current state on presenting on New York Java City. So my stream of events is my stream, and my table that represents my current state is my table. Now. Vice versa. Uh, now we have a table that we are we, we, we performing certain operations on this. We inserting data into the table. We read. Uh, we do select. Uh, we do delete, update, so far and so on. Every database will capture this as individual sets of facts. So this is how you change of um, ch the changes of the state. So Victor was standing here. Now was standing here. And now kind of Victor's state changes or like uh, becoming a stream of events. So this is how uh, things uh, from the state, they start uh, they getting like velocity, they start moving. Um, and there's uh, the stream table duality, uh, based on the previous two facts, you can uh, turn table into stream, transform the stream and turn into table. Um, and uh, also, this is very important, I guess this is what most important thing that you can take stream of facts and apply and or like join them with stream of uh, the dimensions like I would call it in um, other uh, other places. So um, in Kafka, it represents by uh, two two types of topics. Uh, it's a regular topic and compacted topic. Difference between compacted topic and regular topic. In regular topic, you can have um, whatever you want. You have full history. In compacted topic, you have only uh, latest and greatest version. That's it. And it will be handled automatically. Now, okay, okay. So now let's see how it looks like from perspective of application. So I have very uh, simple use case here. I have a two uh, data sets. One data set represents a different movie database. Uh, I love movies. Um, Chandra, what's your favorite movie? The Opposite. Uh, okay, let's see. Do we have it? What no, no, no. Uh, my database is not full. For example, my favorite movie uh, is here. Yeah, Pulp Fiction is here. Or um, what do we have a number 42? Oh, we have Amelie. How many of you have seen this uh, the French movie? It's an awesome movie. Uh, and it's, it's cool that it's on 42 because it's kind of like very existential. Now, so what this um, thing uh, looks like. So I have some data, some, some data that I have in database and files. It's a, it's a comma separated. In my case, it's a, like a separator with a double, um, uh, how you call those? Columns, columns yeah. Um, and uh, uh, because I need to use uh, my pipes to, um, uh, as my, kind of or sign uh, because I have uh, directors, I have writers, some, some other, uh, other components uh, of, of the movie. But essentially I want to show you how I would use uh, this uh, approach for building um, rating applications. So I want to have my Rotten Tomatoes type of thing in streaming fashion. Now, and I do have a ratings. It's not that exciting as the previous one. So this is how it looks like because it has movie ID and it has rating. And this is some, some random user that we have in the internet, some, some ID that we want to have. Now, so what we need to do here? So we need to take this file, we need to bring this into Kafka, we need to create a stream of this event. Um, and after that, because we're Java guys, we need to parse it, we need to turn in some objects. Um, and after that, we want to, um, um, we want to have uh, average rating. 
And after that, we want to have a aggregated result where we have movie and rating, and I would consider this as a huge success. Now, in order to uh, put these things into play, so let me see if I have... So, first of all, I'll use uh, Kafka, uh, the Confluent platform, it's uh, things what we do, it's uh, an open source thing, and we have some tools around this, so let me see if I have this run. Everything is down, so I will do... Um, where is my... I'll start... Uh, all my components that I need for this matter. So it depends on Zookeeper and the, uh, this uh, the command line tool knows that I need to start Zookeeper first. After that, I need to start Kafka itself, and I need to have a schema registry because in schema registry I will be storing my schema. Because even though I'm writing things in Java, in the real world, other people who are not in Java also want to cons uh, 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 consume this data. So I need to publish schema somewhere. So, for example, in other languages, they also can read this bi uh, uh, binary data from Kafka, apply schema, and it will turn into object that they can read in a um, different language. Now, next thing, I have this um, very neat script that will first of all create all topics and populate this data into Kafka. I don't need to write any sophisticated logic, I will just use like unique tools. So uh, line by line, I will pass it to console uh, producer that will pipe this data inside, um, um, inside, uh, inside Kafka. So for example, um, to demonstrate this, that data is actually there, um, let me show you. So I will have this. Raw movies. Uh, so it, 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 there is my consumer. I will start my consumer. It will start uh, reading data. Uh, it will waiting for data to arrive. I will run this um, uh, set row. So it will start pushing data. Uh, data already pushed here. So this is data already inside my topics. Um, the topics. Some of the topics were already created before because I run this demo and I didn't clean up after myself, which is. Um, I, just, boy, I don't know why I didn't do this. Um, anyway, so uh, now uh, if I will do things like uh, list, if I will uh, run this and I will see a list of the topics, uh, actually let me erase it because in this case it would be uh, destroy. In this case, it will be much cleaner, so you will not see all these intermediate topics. Um, while uh, it's uh, uh, restarting, so one of the things that you will see, there's some of the topics uh, that will be used as a, uh, uh, um, some of the like service topics. Uh, let me just start this here. Uh, while it's starting, I will explain a couple of interesting things. So with Kafka, all applications that work with Kafka, they don't need to have another storage except Kafka. So that's why things like schema registry, this application that stores schema, it uses Kafka as a storage to have schema there. Um, the, this, remember this like mommy bird, the, uh, the consumer uh, group controller, it also tracks all information about consumer sets and special topic. You don't need to have external storage. So back in the day, this stuff was stored inside Zookeeper, not anymore. Uh, we're trying to get rid of Zookeeper. Um, and uh, there's some, like, in the, some, some other topics. Now it's empty. Now let me... Um, uh, let me do it once again. I repopulate this data. Data is here. Now uh, all these topics will be created. Um, uh, everything what I need. So essentially, my have uh, two topics: uh, raw movies, raw ratings, and uh, the counts, sums, and etc. Now, in order to process this, um, there's a couple things you can also go and uh, check this code uh, afterwards. But um, I will use uh, Spring. Um, Spring thing. So Spring is a cool framework because it has integration with everything. So and it simplifies a lot of things when we need to deal with uh, with other frameworks like ORM, ORMs, uh, um, some RESTful services, everything. So Spring can do this. So Spring actually has a Kafka support. Like how you would know that it has a Kafka support? It has a notation for that. Enable Kafka, enable Kafka stream. So in this case, Spring uh, would know what kind of files to scan, what kind of stuff to look. And uh, in this case, it can um, can instantiate things for you. So in my particular case, um, I have a two two application, two distinct application. One application will run logic. So my dashboard, well, this all this computation will be happening. In another application, that simply user will be clicking on the website saying, "Hey, 
Pulp Fiction is awesome and I'll show you how you can do it. So in this case I have my, uh, where's my, uh, my web, uh, my web loader, very simple, very simple application. Um, uh, it has one, one controller that has uh, the path ratings. In this case, I'm reading from request parameters. I'm reading movie ID and reading rating. Now, and after that, I use a thing called Kafka template. How many of you use the Spring GWC template, for example, in the past? So it's a cool, it, it's a, it's a hides lots of uh, like uh, steps that you need to do to configure this. So in this case, it hides uh, lo lots of complexity. It's also uh, the red, uh, Kafka template allows you to do some retry, some, some other cool stuff. But in this case, I'm using this solely for the purpose of publishing uh, data. So um, the, the way how it looks like, uh, so where's my web now? <clears throat> So the way how it would look like, it will start uh, the web server and uh, let me start my, uh, my raw, raw ratings um, and interesting cool thing I can do from beginning and I can uh, read data from all ratings from the, from the topic any given moment of time. Now it read it from beginning and now it will be waiting for new ratings to arrive. So in this particular case. I would use my uh, the postman that uh, will hit this particular uh, URL, in this case local host and ratings, um, movie 52 which is Pulp Fiction, Pulp Fiction is awesome, rating 10, so fire away. Okay, I have a thumbs up, um, so what happened here, I got the new rating from the user 42, uh, movie ID 52 uh, and uh, the rating 10. Now, it's cool stuff, everything works. Now we need to start another application that will do actual processing. Um, so, um, the, in this case, I'm using uh, the Kafka Streams uh, uh, framework to, to build this stuff. Now, let me show you really, really quickly how it looks like. Um, yeah, Victor. Yeah, um, five, two, uh, two, two minutes and 40 seconds. Yes, mm -hmm. I see it. Now, uh, how many of you guys use Java 8? Java Util Streams? Yeah. Cool. So it's pretty much similar uh, things and if you follow my you know, progress as a speaker at the New York Java City, you know I love talking about streams. I was talking about Java Streams, uh, Hazelcast, now I'm talking about Kafka Streams. Now, important bits here. So first of all, this is how it works. We take a, uh, our uh, topic uh, that was um, contains role movies. We parse it. This is uh, we pass it to the map function, and the parser will simply read this line and create the object. Now we're dealing with this object. We are creating um, a stream that has a key. We take a movie ID as a key because we want to uh, correlate our ratings in this movie ID. Um, and after that, we save it into topic uh, named uh, the movies. The movies topic will contain data uh, in the binary format because we're using special serializer that will write this in arrow format. Next thing, we actually want to have a rated movies, so this is why we need to get um, information about uh, my, my ratings. Um, information about ratings, how I get those. So in my ratings topics, this is my ratings topics, I'm reading this from here, I'm also parsing this, and after that I'm using a couple of things that you're probably familiar with, but at least you, you will understand. So I'm grouping by key in order to uh, create a group of keys, I have this like a grouped stream. After that I'm counting and I'm reducing, so meaning that I'm, I'm, I'm getting some of all ratings, and after that I have um, uh, the function that will actually create um, uh, the, the overage uh, rating for a particular movie. And after that, I just simply use this uh, a table uh, to table join where I will have a result in my rated movies. So let me run this really quickly and before I... Uh, and where is my streaming demo? Uh, stream demo. So what it will do, it will find, first of all, uh, Spring Boot uh, will find this stuff. Um, uh, all my classes that's related to Kafka streams, it will initiate this application that will constantly run. So right now, so first of all, I started from the very beginning, it read everything, and now it prints out all this rating information about this movie. So remember, uh, we get this fresh mo uh, movies, we have ratings. Uh, we had this um, 
the overage rating for a particular movie ID and we use movie ID to join it. Now, will it work? Will it work? Will we see updated rating for Pulp Fiction? Let me see. Yes, and it happens immediately. And if you, I will continue to click, if I will continue to click, I will get updated rating over here. So uh, you can get it. Um, um, one last thing, I have a 20 seconds, right? Uh, you're probably wondering like why why I'm wearing this. If you're not, um, I'm still explaining. But this is so super cool because I, I need to share. It. So basically, it's not uh, what we, we come up with. Essentially, it's come from our customers. So it's a guy was at uh, like uh, the meeting with some like C level executives, um, and uh, his manager was uh, asked him to present like the, the the progress with their like a Kafka deployment and things like that. And he asked him, can you just you know explain the things, but do not oversell. And he said, yeah, yeah, of course I will do. And he started his presentation like, from the beginning of times, there was a three greatest invention in human history. <laughs> it's invention of fire, invention of will, invention of Kafka. And this is, this is why now I wear this t-shirt because I think it was super cool. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we have this Kafka Summit coming in a couple of weeks. If you want to come, we have a promo code. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. I will love to answer questions. Um, thank you so much. Uh, sorry for... Um, rushed ending, but um, uh, you can find the, if you did a picture of the slides, you will find everything in the internet. Thank you so much. Thanks.